Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Maria and Claudia. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Professor? Good, good. How are you? And uh, how are you, Maria? Just And <laughs> I see two more people are joining. Um, did you guys all sign into the uh, uh, today's forum? I see. Okay. Yes. I see. Uh, yeah. Good, good, good. I see like, you know, uh, uh, five people so far. Um, and I guess, you know, well, you guys are all aware we are, you know, on uh, daylight savings time. So we're actually meeting, we're meeting at two o'clock, but it's like, you know, uh, uh, 1 p.m. Um, previously. Anyway, uh, so some people, you know, so understandably, some people may be having a hard time keeping up with the uh, new time, right? But, you know, I'm hoping, you know, the rest of the class will join us uh, very shortly. So let me um, go back to, let me pick it up from uh, where we left off. We were talking about the uh, promise ray node, right? And I said the promise ray node is the, um, uh, uh, used uh, mainly in uh, uh, B2B, business to business, and the uh, 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 it is using, you know, basically a, a simple interest rate, um, not compound interest rate, because, you know, uh, promissory note, maturity on the promissory note is basically, you know, a very short term. And uh, although theoretically it can be up to 270 days, but you know, uh, uh, nobody welcomes, you know, uh, uh, any promissory note. Nobody welcomes promissory note, you know, uh, that has maturity uh, more than, you know, 90 days or 120 days. That That's unthinkable. It's like, you know, um, uh, uh, it's almost like you know, um, uh, emaci emaci uh, emaciating, uh the. I mean, it's not only you know, um, um, uh, not courteous. I mean, even in business to business, right? Between the buyer and seller, there should be respect. Oh, sometimes it's not always so. I mean, a, a big big buyer is always you know flexing muscle and you know you know. Um, you know, better position to uh, uh, flex muscle and uh, 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 use clout, right, um, on the small uh, vendor. But, you know, uh, although uh, the reality may be like that, but, you know, um, um, so sometimes they, you know, when they, when they, uh, um, when they try to uh, 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 use their clout, then they they issue something like you know uh, uh, promissory note with 180 days. You know, that's un but you know that's that's totally you know outrageous, right? That's almost you know um, uh, not a very uh, polite or not customary, right? Uh, but anyway. Uh, since so the maturity is usually you know something like 60 days you know um, and then uh, as I you know as the example uh, I gave uh, last time uh, so if Best Buy bought 1,000 computers from uh, Dell and the uh, uh, each computer is $300 right between between Dell and Best Buy right so this $300 is what they called uh, manufacturer's price or x factory price x factory right the price leaving the factory right x factory price price leaving the factory uh, so the total uh, 
uh, revenue for Dell would be 300,000, right? Uh, but that is, I told you, that is the uh, CGS for Best Buy, right? Now, but Best Buy pays with promissory note, 60-day promissory note, right? Uh, with the uh, uh, APR of 10%. Uh, so then, you know, uh, the maturity value, right? The face value is 300 K, right? That's the, you know, uh, principle, in other words, the principle of, or the face value of, uh, uh, principle of this promissory note. And maturity value uh, will be uh, uh, basically, you know, P times one plus R times T, right? This is how the uh, uh, simple interest rate works. Uh, and then, so, 300K principal times one plus 10%, right? 10%, right? APR. But, you know, we all know uh, 60 days is not a, uh, I mean, uh, it's annual, 10% uh, is, you know, APR, annual rate. So um, you cannot multiply it to 60 because 60 is days only, right? So then what do you need to do? You will need to adjust uh, you will need to convert 60 days, right? You will need to adjust the days, right, uh, uh, by years or, you know, or convert days into years. And so you divide 60 by 360. That's one, one over six. And then, you know, uh, if you do this, uh, you arrive at uh, 3OK, okay? okay? Uh, 305K, which means if you... If the best, uh, if uh, Dell holds it for 60 days and presents it to, if Dell holds it for 60 days and presents it to a uh, Best Buy, then they will receive 305. So that 5K is the interest for holding it for 60 days, right? Uh, and I, as I told you, um, uh, since Dell is a big, big company, right? Uh, their cash flow situation. Uh, is relatively uh, better than small businesses, right? And if this was a small business, right? If there was a small business, they don't have, they don't have the luxury, uh, they don't have the luxury of holding it for 60 days because they are constantly, constantly uh, plagued by cash flow shortage. So they will, what they will do, uh, they will, um, they will take this to a bank. They will take this to a bank or a financial company. Uh, financial. Okay. And, um, these financial companies are called uh, special. They are specializing in um, uh, buying these promissory notes, not just the promissory notes, but the invoices. So I'm going to get get to that. Uh, so uh, these financial companies are called factors. In you know, factors are uh, a generic name. Okay, um, and this factor is different from, um, this is the deciding factor, right? This, the, this word factor is, has different origin, right? The, the origin of the word, the etymology of this word factor is different from, you know, um, uh, factor analysis or, you know, this is the factor, you know, by the factor of 10 or, you know, it's different. I'm gonna, you know, I already explained it all in my uh, main lecture videos, and if you uh, uh, studied it, you would know. Now, <clears throat> so what? Um, uh, so as I said, small suppliers, small suppliers don't have the luxury of waiting, you know, 60 days. They cannot hold it for six days. Uh, because they are const they they have short cash flow shortage all the time. So what do they do? They take it to the uh, uh, financial companies or banks and sell it, right? 
But when they sell it, um, they uh, they cannot get the full uh, value because uh, think about it. Um, even on the day one, right, with full 60 days left, with full 60 days left, think about it. On the day one, if they take it to the bank on the day one, right? Uh, oh, this is really not that good. Even on the day one, right? That means, you know, time left, 60 days, right? Even with full 60 days left, uh, with 60 days left, they cannot uh, get three or, uh, they cannot sell it for three or five. They cannot get three or five. Why? Think about it. Uh, when, when Dell, uh, when the supplier, right? If when Dell sells it to the bank, right? Um, and if they get 305k, that means you know what the bank is only bank is holding it for 60 days, right? And just you know at the end of 60 days, if bank pays them 305. And after holding it for 60 days, they will present it to uh, the issuer, Best Buy. And Best Buy will pay them uh, 305, um, 305. They'll pay them 305K. Then think about it. This, they are making nothing here out of uh, in other words, uh, the bank is only doing the uh, uh, service as an intermediary uh, and runs the risk, right? Runs the risk of not getting this money paid, right? Think about it. Um, Best Buy is, you know, we, uh, in reality, Best Buy is relatively a... Uh, 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 high credit worthy company. I mean, uh, Best Buy is not going to uh, um, rip off this 305K, right? But, you know, let's say, that, uh, you know, um, uh, regardless of the reality, right? Don't, you know, um, don't think about, you know, um, the reality. But, you know, let's say this is a company that is totally, you know, uh, unknown or very low credit rating. Let's say this is a company with low credit rating, right? Then it's a big risk for the bank, right? Bank is, you know, uh, uh, taking the risk. Bank is taking the risk for 60 days, right? the risk of, you know, not getting this, you know, honored, right? What if they are not honoring this? Or uh, Best Buy defaults or Best Buy, you know, uh, somehow goes out of business uh, in the next 60 days, then the bank is running the risk. They cannot, you know, in other words, you know, you understand what I'm saying. They, they cannot just simply pay them the whole uh, maturity value of 305, right? They need to be compensated for that risk. So what do they do? They will discount it, right? They will discount it and they are not gonna give them uh, three or five. Uh, they will discount it and they give them something like, you know, uh, uh, 300K and then they receive, you know, uh, and then uh, they hold it for 60 days, right? Taking that risk for 60 days and then when they collect 305, then that, you know, uh, they made 5K. And that is their, you know, um, uh, that that is their cut. I mean, that's their compensation. That's their premium for taking the risk, right? 
So this is called, you know, uh, this process is called factoring. So in, uh, in factoring, right, uh, basically they are discounting, they discount. So what's factoring? Uh, factoring. Discounting, right? Promissory note. Or very short term, short term uh, debt, right? Uh, by using, by simple interest rate. That's called factoring. Okay, so actually, you know, I'm not going to go into uh, how the factoring, uh, the the mechanism uh, of the factoring. I mean, uh, it all depends on, you know, uh, uh, just like, you know, in this simple example, um, the bank will give Dell 300K and, you know, um, they will take, you know, um, uh, uh, 5k for their own cut, right? When they receive three or five from the issuer of the promissory note. But actually, you know, uh, in this case, um, uh, if you if they did it really like that, then you know, um, uh, that that hardly happens. The bank did a very fair job, but you know, uh, the bank did a very impartial impartial fair uh, um, split or the allocation of the um, of the maturity value uh, in reality they will cut it uh, they will split it more in their favor it's not going to be like you know so uh, Dell might get especially with the whole you know six days left right Dell might even get you know uh, 270 right? Uh, and the bank bank's cut will be, you know, then 8K, right? Um, so anyway, the, the point is, uh, this is how uh, factoring works. And uh, it's also, you know, it's commensurate with, it's commensurate with the uh, length of time. I mean, uh, Dell could have, uh, Dell could have brought it to the bank on uh, not on day one, but on day ten. If they brought it, if, if they brought it to the bank and sold it to the bank on day ten, the bank is taking the risk for the remaining fifty days. And of course, then you know uh, 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 the bank's cut will be a uh, uh, proportional uh, proportional to the. Uh, uh, to the days, number of days. So uh, previously, I mean, obviously, bank's code will be smaller, right? Bank's code will be smaller. Uh, if Dell brought it to the bank on day 30, right? Um, and then, then the bank will run the risk, take the risk for only half the time. So obviously, the uh, bank's code will have to be, in other words, discounting will have to be uh, smaller, right? It will it will be discounted uh, uh, by smaller uh, uh, fraction, right? Now that's what um, uh, and as for the exact you know uh, mechanism uh, of uh, that a simple discount. I mean, factoring is another name for simple discount or bank discount. And factoring is a generic name, uh, but you know, uh, more uh, specifically, it's called the simple discount. Simple or bank discount. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the word factoring actually comes from the. Uh, uh, this is an interesting thing. You know, I, I told you that the uh, the word factor uh, comes from completely different origin, 
right? I mean, uh, when we say, you know, um, at the beginning I said, um, factor analysis, uh, it's different from, you know, uh, the word factor and factor analysis or factorization or, you know, um, uh, uh, we multiply it by a factor of 10 or no, uh, totally different origin. Why? Because it comes from the French word la facture, French word la facture and uh, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, the Romance languages have uh, a similar uh, words. Uh, in Italian is is called il fattore, il fattore. I believe in uh, Spanish is called um, I don't know if it's going to be L or, or La or um, Factora. I think it is La Factora in Spanish. And they all mean what? They mean uh, invoice. Right? They mean invoice. Uh, so actually, you know, even in, uh, um, and in German and in Russian is different, but, you know, um, one of the uh, Slavic languages, you know, um, uh, uh, Czech, in Czech, right, in Czechoslovakia, right, even in Czech, uh, in Czechoslovakia, you, you write it like that, even in Czech, um, it's called factura. Or oh, factur, I think factur, if I remember correctly, because I've, I've been there and I, that, that was, you know, quite, um, that was quite, you know, uh, weird because it's a, uh, Czech is a Slavic language. So basically a lot of vocabulary, a lot of words are similar to Russian. And you know, uh, uh, most most means bridge in Czech as well as in you know, uh, Russian. Um, a lot of things are you know a lot of words uh, have like common uh, or you know cognates cognates right. Uh, but then you know suddenly out of blue, the invoice is factur factur right. Um, yeah, some words may be, you know, uh, influenced more by a different language group, but, you know, um, but from that, it is quite obvious why, where the word factoring comes from, right? When that French came into English, then it got anglicized and became factor, right? So then uh, that gives you uh, also, um, that explains how the invoice works. Now, remember, okay, I, uh, I closed it already, I guess. So you see um, promissory notes and accounts receivable are uh, two of two of the uh, you know uh, uh, two components of the current assets, and we already know promissory notes, you know. Uh, but then, what's accounts receivable? It's still uh, the money to collect, right? You haven't received it, so it's money to collect. So it's like promissory note. It's like promissory note. Actually, promissory note is also a kind of accounts receivable. You still have to uh, collect it. Um, but uh, what's different? What's uh, the difference between the uh, promissory notes and accounts receivable is that the uh, uh, promissory notes are uh, they are both credit sales because you still have to collect the payment. Right, um, they are both, you know, uh, uh, credit sale. But promissory notes are initiated. It's a credit sale initiated by the buyer, whereas accounts receivable are credit sale 
uh, initiated by the seller, right? Uh, so what does that mean? Accounts receivable, um, accounts receivable. Oh, this is this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Accounts receivable. Um, if you think about it, um, accounts receivable is just a notion. It's an idea, right? We all understand account uh, from you know semantics. I mean, the sem you think you understand accounts receivable because you know um, you understand the meaning of the word. The semantics isn't everything. Why? Um, uh, in case of promissory note, we understand the concept as well as its physical form. Accounts receivable is something you can see, touch, and feel, and you know, uh, um, uh, it's something that has physical form, right? Shape and form, right? It, it's got physical uh, form, but accounts receivable. Think about it. It's only a notion, right? It's a concept, but what is its exact physical form? I mean, hmm? promissory note is not only a, a concept, but also a physical uh, form, it, but you know, a physical thing. But what's the physical representation of accounts receivable? Anybody? The voice? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, who was that? Mukhtar. Mukhtar, okay. Uh, today, uh, section 1401, and today is 14th, right? March 14th. So yeah, Mukhtar, you got, uh, you're getting 0 0.5. Yes, the physical form of accounts receivable is the invoice, right? And then um, think about it. Didn't I say uh, factor, la facture? Uh, that's that basically means invoice, right? Uh, so basically, what did they do with the invoice? Um, they, they took it to the bank. I mean, suppose you uh, invoice is what? Uh, between buyer and seller, um, without getting paid, the seller delivers the se seller delivers the uh, goods to the buyer and then just drops off just drops off the invoice. right? That means you know uh, you got to pay this within 30 days or within 60 days, okay? And this usually happens in uh, B2B, business to business. And think about it, if you are a vendor, right? Um, you deliver something without getting paid in advance, right? And that uh, one reason for that is that's for a, a long-term uh, business relationship. You in other words, you give favor, right? You give favor to the uh, buyer uh, so that the buyer would have more, you know, uh, cash flow uh, uh, on hand, right? Uh, so it's a deferred payment. Uh, but then there should be, you know, uh, the, the invoice is basically a request to pay later, right? Like 60 days later, I mean, within 60 days or within 30 days. Um, so basically, you know, invoice and uh, what is factoring? Factoring is basically, you know, uh, discounting promissory notes. Not only promissory notes, the same thing happens with the invoice. Factoring is uh, basically discounting the invoice, right? Uh, so basically, they work in exactly in the same way, right? Uh, so, 
so one thing you know uh, uh, when you know when it comes to factoring invoices really matter a lot right invoices are relevant very relevant right and then let's take a look at the uh, so that explains everything about the uh, uh, the balance sheet side uh, I mean you know uh, asset side uh, think about the liability side we already understand you know equity and the uh, uh, non-current liabilities or long-term debt long-term debt consists of mostly bonds and mortgage and short-term debt or current liabilities it you know uh, mostly consists of accounts payable now uh, if I wrote, uh, if I issued promissory note, uh, if I have invoices, if I have invoices, that means I have accounts payable. If I have, uh, if I have issued promissory notes, I have notes payable, right? And then I have interest payment, right? Which will be, uh, which will be also reflected in the. Uh, in the income statement, right? Because it will have to be the same number, what, right? The same number will have to be, uh, this number should be also reflected here, right? And then uh, let's see if it was, something's not right. It cannot be, this is 43, why is it? Okay, F12, F12 is the uh, uh, total non-current liabilities, right? Long-term debt uh, times 0025. So that's like 2.5%. Uh, 2 uh, I, I think that's annual. And then uh, what I put here is probably... Something's okay. Interest is L27, right? L27 is this rate, interest rate, which is you know, uh, uh, it should be 0 0.025 because I, if I use you know, um, okay, so uh. Now, this looks like 3%, but you know, uh, you're forgetting that um, we need to, uh, uh, it is rounded, okay, it's rounded. These numbers, if you increase decimal, you will see, why is it? L27, this is, this has got to be ah, something. Point O to five. O to five. What was F12? Oh, F12 was uh, total debt. Okay. L27 is, why did I do 0 0.25? Oh, okay. So I did quarterly. I made it, I mean, if this is annual, all the rates are annual, so I made it quarterly, but you know, there's no need for that. We'll just, uh, Clearly, this is a lot. So, I mean, uh, if we okay, so the reason so L twenty seven is the interest rate, right? And F twelve is the uh, total debt. Why did I do uh, zero point two five to make it quarterly, right? The statements are basically, if these statements are quarterly, right, uh, annual interest must be adjusted for that quarterly uh, factor, right? Because we are, uh, uh, 
uh, we're talking about the quarterly interest, right? And then here, uh, actually then it must coincide with this. I mean, this cannot be just, you know, on its own. It should be equal to, this thing should be equal to, oh, that should be equal to this, okay? That should be equal to this. Okay. And the accrued wages and taxes. You know, um, accruals are, um, I explained it in the uh, main lecture videos. Uh, well, I don't think we have time to uh, go over, you know, but um, just to briefly um, explain. Not all transactions are uh, completed. I mean, uh, basically anything that enters these statements are assumed to have been, uh, not just assumed, they, are, they have been completed. Transactions have been made. Uh, for example, um, uh, sales revenue, that's, you know, um, the result of the uh, transaction, right? Um, investment income, is the result of the transaction. The transactions have happened. You know, I mean, from investment, this uh, dividend or interest have been already paid out to us. Whereas uh, wages, uh, so notes payable. This is the uh, uh, the result of the completed transaction. Interest payment, uh, result of the completed transaction. Whereas uh, accounts payable too, result of the um, uh, interest is, uh, and then accruals, uh, wages, you know, as a good example of accruals, wages, um, so at the end of the month, uh, think about it, this is a quarterly statement, so the quarter is over, right? Whatever quarter it may be, the quarter is over. So you can have this statement. But then it doesn't mean just so uh, end of the quarter is end of certain month. You know, uh, first quarter, end of March is the end of first quarter. And then end of May, uh, uh, June, end of June uh, is the end of the second quarter. Now, at the end of every month, uh, so these accounts must have been closed. But then think about it. Um, your payday isn't always, your payday isn't always the end of the month. Huh? Your payday isn't always the end, the end of the month. If you're buying, uh, if you're getting bi-weekly paychecks, right, you get it on Friday, right? But if the end of the month, the last day of the month is not Friday, if the end of the month is Wednesday or Monday, you don't get paid. You get paid only in the next month, right? On the on Friday. So uh, wages have not been paid out, right? Uh, so nobody gets pay, nobody gets the uh, uh, paycheck up to Monday or up to uh, uh, Wednesday, right? But Wednesday is the end of the month. You don't get the uh, paycheck. But you know, there's accrued wages on up to Wednesday, right? Makes sense. Um, so the transaction of paying out the uh, uh, paying out the paychecks have not been completed, but you have to record whatever has accrued up to that point. That's what the accrual accrual is. Oh, that that brings us. So that's we don't have not even ten minutes. So um, what's the uh, uh, from the company's perspective? How do we um, uh, from the company's perspective? So how do we uh, find you know? Uh, how do we understand 
ROI, right? Return on investment. Um, for companies' perspective, there are two measures of return. One is ROE, return on equity, and the other one, ROA, return on assets. Now, if you think about it, return is the profit. In other words, right? Return is the profit. I mean, this is the... Profit is the uh, the source of the return. What the what should I say? Okay, um, and then so, and from the uh, company's perspective, right? Company used all its company used all its you know uh, total assets, right? Uh, total assets are what? Total assets are basically like the uh, tree. Um, Right? If you think about it, uh, suppose you're a farmer and you have an orchard, right? You have an orchard, you're a farmer. And you have a, so let's say you're tending, uh, you're tending to an apple tree. Right, and at harvest, right, there will be a lot of apples. You have you no know, a harvest of apples, right? And these apples are like your profit, right? And the Tree, tree is like your total assets because you know uh, uh, I've been telling you a company is nothing but a vehicle, right? To generate a profit, to deliver profit to the uh, shareholders, and if you are the uh, shareholder, the tree itself is you know uh, the total assets, right? Uh, which and I've been telling you assets must generate income. Right, and an apple tree that bears a lot of fruits, a lot of apples. Right, apple tree with that bears a lot of apples uh, has a lot of asset value. Right, that's uh, the apple tree is your assets. So you want to know, uh, uh, basically think about it, uh, the ratio between. So the ratio between profit and total assets, right, is a measure of the productivity or the prof profitability of this apple tree, right? So the apple tree is uh, the total assets of your company. And think about it, if you, um, if you want to measure the productivity of your apple tree or your total assets what would you do you will need to uh, you will need to take um, the ratio uh, ratio of profit uh, over total assets right and this is called return on assets Okay, and then if you think about total assets, total assets come from two sources, right? Equity and debt. Right? 
So if you're the uh, uh, from the from the equity holders perspective, right? Because equity is um, what the stockholders paid in for this tree, right? Equity is what the uh, uh, equity is what the uh, shareholders paid in. So they want to uh, if they want to measure the productivity of their equity, right, or the profitability of their equity. What should they do? Then they would have to also um, measure it like. Okay, they will have to measure it like, you know, this profit divided by equity. So think about it. This is called, you know, return on equity. Of course, um, The reason for, you know, uh, the rationale, the reasoning for the ratio is just like the um, uh, fuel economy. Now think about it. Everything, uh, everything is about efficiency. When you buy a car, uh, one thing you consider, probably the most, something you consider the most is the fuel economy or gas mileage, right? What's fuel economy? Fuel economy or gas mileage is simply, you know, how many... Uh, miles, you know, uh, per gallon. Right? Uh, basically, uh, you divide uh, the total miles you divide total uh, total miles driven by total gallons of gas, right? Gallons of gas, total um, gallons of gas, of course. Then this is the uh, mi gas mileage or fuel economy. And of course, the higher the number, higher this number, uh, the better it is. In other words, the, the car is more of, of fuel efficient, right? Nobody wants to, um, I don't know, there are, there are people who drive like, you know, a Ford Expedition, which is a very, very big truck, uh, I, you know, uh, um, or, you know, uh, Cadillac Escalade, you know, they get probably just five miles per gallon, five miles per gallon, big engine, five miles per gallon. Uh, it's a gas guzzler. And they don't, you know, uh, uh, they cry out about the gas price. If they, are, if they are concerned about the gas price, they shouldn't, they shouldn't, you know, uh, drive a big truck, they should get something like, you know, a Prius, right? Or something that, you know, uh, uh, a hybrid car, right? But anyway, the point is, you know, uh, how do you measure the efficiency? The efficiency is basically, you know, uh, this is basically productivity, but uh, the higher, um, the highest productivity is basically uh, efficiency, right? The higher the the higher the uh, productivity, the more efficient it is. Productivity and efficiency are uh, quite, you know, uh, related. Um, uh, something like Ford Expedition or Cadillac Escalade, if they get five miles per gallon, uh, that's their productivity. And obviously, compared to a, a hybrid car that gets, you know, uh, uh, 50, 50 miles per gallon. Uh, uh, the gas guzzling truck uh, is inefficient, right? Quite inefficient. 
So it's basically output to input ratio. If you think about it, this is the output, right? Isn't that right? This is the output. Uh, this is the input. So output to input ratio is how you measure the efficiency. And uh, in that sense, uh, return on assets and return on equity is the measure of the, uh, it's input output ratio. Your output is profit. Your input is total assets, right? By using total assets, you produced this output of profit. And, you know, uh, from the equity holders perspective, what matters to them is return on equity, which is, you know, profit over equity, right? Which is, you know, also uh, uh, input to uh, output to input ratio. All righty. So uh, that's all the time we have. I thought I could, you know, wrap it up, everything about the uh, uh, topic to today. But it, it might take a little, you know, next, uh, a little more because I still need to uh, talk about, you know, the difference between uh, uh, how the income statement and balance sheet are uh, connected, right? All righty. So any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions? No? Okay. If there are no, uh, no questions, uh, I'll have to call it a day. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Great afternoon. Our class is dismissed now. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Enjoy Thank the rest you. of the day. All right. You're welcome, Sapphire. You're welcome. Claudia. Thank you, Professor. All right, Claudia. All righty. So I'm, uh, I'll stop sharing, stop recording, and sign out.